The rat scurried and clawed inside the walls. It was one of the few things that frustrated Elizabeth about working night shift. During the day, the rats were smart enough to hide themselves. During the day, she could pretend they weren't there. Scratching, clawing, whispering. Constantly out of sight. During the day, she wasn't alone. The electronic bell chimed. A new customer. Elizabeth pulled her face into what she hoped was a friendly smile. In the corner of her vision, the clock flashed 1.28 a.m. Good morning and welcome to PetroGo. She chirped. The energy drinks and no dos were helping. A few more hours and that faux cheer would drain faster than the boning up dam in summertime. The customer stared at her, glazed eyes peering out from a slack face. Elizabeth's smile faltered. She broke eye contact, tapped away at the console screen, and pretended to be busy. The rats had gone silent, perhaps sensing danger. She often thought that was why they were silent during the day. To hide from the manager. Elizabeth risked a glance up, and what she saw made her heartbeat skip. Bleeding train tracks ran up the man's arms, scabbed over but still weeping a foul combination of pus and blood. Another junkie. Hollowed bags clung under his eyes. The smell wafted across the small shop to assault her nose. Someone needed a shower, or a full decontamination suite at the very least. Do you need help finding anything today? She asked. No, he rasped. Just here to check out the goods. Despite this, he didn't browse the shop. He just kept staring at Elizabeth. Her hand hovered over the silent alarm button. If he tries goddamn anything, I'm smashing this button. Those beady eyes cut into her. They were a cadaverous gray, with swirls or flecks of copper red. That unnerved Elizabeth the most. No natural eyes can be like that. She glanced at the weeping train tracks on the odd man's arms. Probably just some weird heroin thing. A clicking buzz came from the man, but his fingers remained motionless. It sounded like mosquitoes or midges, but Elizabeth knew it wasn't the right weather for them. Be seeing you later, he muttered, almost inaudible. The man waved a hand into the air while turning to leave the shop. The bell chimed as he left, and the door slid shut with a quiet thud. He faded from view into the night. Christ, at least that's over. Elizabeth breathed out. Something had been off about that man. Something more than just the usual Friday night junky vibe. She locked the entrance to the shop. Elizabeth decided to serve customers through the night trade window. Across the road, hidden from the dim glow of the street lights, four men gathered and watched. Elizabeth flicked through a paperback of the office. She knew that reading at work wasn't allowed, but it had been a slow night and all the work was finished. She shivered and tugged at her cardigan, wishing she had remembered something sturdier. The office was always cold, sitting across from the walk-in fridge. Elizabeth thought about wearing the communal fridge jacket. But it hasn't been washed in the two years that I've been working here. Knock, knock, knock. The night trade window. She tucked a scrap of loose paper into the paper bag as a bookmark. Elizabeth strolled over to the window but paused once it came into view. 
No one was there. The empty forecourt lay outside the window. The rats had gone silent in the walls. No scurrying or squeaking. Elizabeth could almost feel their eyes watching her from the corners of the shop. She approached the window, glancing outside to see if anyone was crouched down below the window to scare her as a part of a prank. Nothing. Crash. Something made of glass smashed in the walk-in fridge. Elizabeth spun around but the doors to the fridge had fogged up, and whatever was in there was hidden from view by the rows of drinks. Her heart thumped, a staccato beat. Bang, bang, bang. Whatever was in the fridge was going wild. That sounds way louder than the rat. She reached under the counter for the steel emergency torch. It was the closest thing to a weapon within reach. Elizabeth stalked towards the large steel door of the walk-in fridge. Something was moving around in there. Maybe a possum. They're always around. Like teenagers with nothing better to do. The sound of smashing glass meant she had no choice. Cans could be returned to the shelf, but... Broken glass would be pinned on her. The manager would claim she was being clumsy in the fridge. Elizabeth gripped the handle. She yanked. The door swung open. Mist seeped out of the fridge, lit by the exterior lights. Elizabeth's eyes adjusted to the dark interior of the fridge. She reached inside for the light, flicked it up. The bulb flickered and died. Elizabeth turned on the torch. The torch beam failed to cut through the mist. Elizabeth edged into the fridge and the mist parted around her. Whilst the torch couldn't cut through the mist, Elizabeth could at least see where she was going now. She could feel glass crunching under her boots. Something slithered at the far end of the fridge. Elizabeth imagined it sounded like worms and maggots wriggling through flesh. The slithering went silent. Elizabeth walked forward and reached the end of the fridge. Nothing was there, except for broken bottles and dented cans. She picked up the cans and started returning them to the shelves. After a few awkward attempts to grab a couple of cans with one hand, she rested the torch on the floor to free both hands. A creak came from behind Elizabeth. She clutched the torch on the floor and spun around to face the exit flashlights swaying. The mist had dissipated from leeching into the hallway. The flashlight painted an outline of a figure standing in the doorway. The fridge slammed shut. Elizabeth sprinted for the exit, almost slipping on the wet floor. She slammed into the steel. The metal refused to budge almost like something was holding it. She punched the door in frustration. It slid open. The hallway was empty. Elizabeth shivered and rubbed the goosebumps on her arms. The cold from the fridge stuck into her, tugging at her bones. No one was in the hallway, so she strained her ears trying to hear anything moving. Nothing. The rats, however, had started again. They sounded panicked, the way they scrabbled and clawed. Perhaps it had all been a trick of the light, the mist, or something else. Elizabeth certainly hoped so. 
deep breaths, sit by the phone and stay calm. She walked back to the service area. Outside the shop, Elizabeth could see dim street lights and isolated patches of desolate concrete. It was quiet as a graveyard. No cars were pulled up for fuel and none were driving by on the usually busy road. Elizabeth checked the locks on the entrance. Still locked. It was probably the fridge jumper hanging on the wall. That spooked me. She tried to convince herself. Just three hours to go till this shift is over. Elizabeth whispered. She found herself dreaming of a warm bed, a reading light to finish her paperback, and her best friend, Harvey the Rottweiler. Elizabeth leaned against the counter and flicked on the nearby radio. The rats in the walls had begun to calm down. She cranked the music and tried to relax as best she could. Outside the shop, neighborhood dogs began whining and barking. Perhaps if the radio had been quieter, Elizabeth might have known. Something was coming closer. Someone knocked on the window, her second customer of the night. Elizabeth gave a genuine smile and unlocked the door. Hey Josh, how you been? I've got your favorite pie cooking in the oven if you want to wait. She smiled at him. He always liked to stay around the shop for a chat. She thought it would be good to have company on a night like this. Hello, Elizabeth. Joshua nodded. His voice sounded stilted. That sounds delicious. Joshua roamed the shop floor like a hungry dingo, head twitching. He picked up a box of Cocoa Puffs, a bag of sugar, and a large bottle of Coke. I think you forgot to get some food with your sugar there. She teased. Joshua stared at her like a death adder. Elizabeth was no longer smiling. Her eyes wandered over his body, noting peculiar details. His nails were chipped. There was dirt on his knees and elbows. One of his shoes was missing and his jumper looked like it was damp with spots of... Is that blood on your jumper? Elizabeth pulled back. Don't worry, it's not mine. Joshua leant over the counter, his face uncomfortably close to hers. The pie and sugary foods lay scattered on the counter. Whatever you say, not impressed, Josh. Have you been fighting? Elizabeth wondered if his eyes had always been tombstone gray. She clenched her teeth. Joshua leaned back, scratched at his arms. No more fighting for me, I promise. A trail of crusty blood oozed out from the sleeves. Wriggling things slid out from his jumper. They were... Surely not were those... Worms? Did you, um, hear about Hollow and Nick? Elizabeth's hand shook while packing the bag. Yes. Joshua twitched. Elizabeth shook her head in dismay. Can't believe it. They've been camping all their lives and they just go missing. Perhaps it was the King of the Woods. Come on. You might as well say it was Buddy Mary or Siren Head that got them. Elizabeth laughed and slid the bag towards Joshua. Joshua's hand darted across the counter, latching onto her wrist with the strength of a spider catching its prey. The jagged nails dug into her skin, and she jerked backwards to free her hand. The grip refused to yield. His eyes were wild, swiveling in their sockets. Fat worms writhed across the counter. 
Let me go, you idiot. She slapped his hand. His grip didn't falter. Milky pus oozed from Joshua's wounds. The smell of rot assaulted her nostrils. Elizabeth grabbed the emergency torch. Joshua began to wail an unholy sound. The warbling screech echoed in the small petrol station. Elizabeth swung the torch. She smashed it into Joshua's skull with a wet thump. The grip on her wrist weakened. She struck again. Crack. Again. Crack. Joshua gurgled. He stumbled backwards, collapsing to the ground. A chunk of skull and hair was matted to the torch. Elizabeth swallowed to keep the bile in her throat. Joshua convulsed on the floor. His limbs shook as if he were having a spasm. A squelch came from his head. A burst of red spread across his chest, and the light behind the cadaverous eyes faded. Something with too many limbs skittered out of Joshua's crumpled skull. The abomination crawled from Joshua's skull. It jittered across the floor. The thing that was once Joshua's brain smacked into the glass door, shattering it. Elizabeth watched it run out onto the forecourt before it disappeared into the darkness. She vomited. Elizabeth could feel the too many eyes of the creature watching her from the dark. She grabbed her phone and tried dialing 000 for the police, an ambulance, anything that might help. The phone beeped. The line was dead. She was on her own. What can I do? The door is broken. Elizabeth was trying to come up with a plan. She could see the edges of it, and it clicked into place. Elizabeth prepaid the closest petrol pump to her and snatched up a lighter from the tobacco stand. She crawled over the counter, landing on the hard floor. In the darkness, the insectoid legs of the creature could be heard scraping the concrete. She flashed the torch to check it wasn't hiding in the dark and sprinted for the petrol pump. Skidding to a stop on the forecourt, Elizabeth picked up the pump and heard it grumble as it activated. The lighter clicked in her hand. Once. Twice. And gave a quiet rush as the spark caught. The Petro-Go's light stuttered on and off. It seemed like more than just one creature was out there. Elizabeth turned with the torch held between her teeth. Something dashed at the edge of the light, and there, another on the roof. Her fingers twitched on the pump trigger, but she resisted the urge. It's too far away for the Petro to reach. The creature which had taken Joshua's body slunk into view. Elizabeth could make out glimpses of the monstrosity. A dozen or more twitching legs covered in needles protruded from Joshua's brain. Elizabeth felt the bile rising again. It plunged towards her, oversized cockroach legs flailing as it zigzagged across the forecourt. Elizabeth pulled the trigger, and a salvo of Petra leapt forth. She threw the lighter into the stream. The Petra burst into flames, and with a ferocious roar engulfed the forecourt in burning death. Joshua's brain was caught in the firebomb. The monstrosity screamed as it burned alive, strips of flesh melting into charred lumps. 
Elizabeth kept her finger on the trigger, yelling and screaming at the creature as she soaked it in burning petrol. The creature tried to flee but was burning too bright to escape. The pump clicked dry. Elizabeth glanced around for a weapon. Her eyes locked on the fire extinguisher. She grabbed it from the holster and sprayed a thin layer on the forecourt. Elizabeth was careful to avoid spraying the alien creature. You can burn in hell for all I care. She approached what had once been Joshua's brain. She beat the abomination with the fire extinguisher. She ground it into pulp. She kept smashing. It twitched once, twice, and stopped. Elizabeth dropped the fire extinguisher. Exhausted, she sat down. It was over. Chitness, chittering, echoed in the darkness around her. Elizabeth stood and held the lighter in her hand. There were always 